Now we are going to talk about the toad circulatory system. Okay, so first and foremost, what is the importance of the circulatory system? Well, if anything, the gases that you breathe in, like the oxygen, okay, and also the carbon dioxide that you expel, it's being delivered to your entire system through these blood vessels through your circulatory system that's why you have a heart okay the heart will pump the blood that carries these gases and also it carries a lot of nutrients a lot of nutrients that you got from uh, from this part here right there from your stomach your intestines as you can see they have a lot of blood vessels and the nutrients that uh, your uh, intestines have absorbed will be delivered through the blood to the rest of your body so that you will have energy for your muscles to contract for your brain to think all right and so that's how important the circulatory system is okay now for your circulatory system you have of course um, essentially the main organ which is your heart and then of course you have the blood vessels okay now um, let us take a look at your toad heart um, your toad heart mainly has three chambers, okay? So it has two atria right here, and it has one ventricle. Oh, look, it's Mickey Mouse. Okay, so it has two atria and one ventricle, all right? As opposed to human hearts that have two ventricles, so for the toad frog also, they have just a three-chambered heart, so just one ventricle. So if we take a look at this diagram right here, this simplifies essentially the circulation of blood throughout the toad body, okay? Now, from the ventricle, it will pump the blood outward to the lungs. Part of it goes to the lungs, part of it goes to the body, okay? And then, from the lungs, it enters the left atrium to enter back to the heart okay and from the body it enters through the right atrium so this circuit the one that is the red circuit this is called the pulmonary circuit and then the one that is in blue that is the systemic circuit so what is the difference of these two circuits essentially remember that you need oxygen to survive and you also need to bring out the carbon dioxide right because this well you need these gases to generate energy or to create energy okay so what happens is um, you inhale you inhale and so you get oxygen alright and so the blood vessels in your lungs okay will pick up the oxygen okay so the blood cells in your lungs will pick up the oxygen and then it will be brought to the heart it will enter the heart via the left atrium okay now after that all right so what is the whole point of this of course you get oxygen so that you can provide the other organs with oxygen okay so now from the left atrium the ventricle will pump it okay to the body okay to the body and then there in the body the oxygen will be used and the carbon dioxide okay the carbon dioxide that has been used by the organs it will also be picked up by the blood it will return to the heart via the right atrium so the blue will be the veins all right via the right atrium pump to the ventricle and then goes to the lungs and when in the lungs you exhale you take out the carbon dioxide okay so you take out the trash there so that completes one circuit now what really complicates things is the fact that the ventricle in your toad is just one which means that there is a mixing of blood that has oxygen and blood that does not have oxygen right there is a mixing of blood here which is why essentially uh, respiration is a bit inefficient in your toad and so they solve this by the fact that they employ two modes of respiration so they have pulmonary respiration and they also have cutaneous respiration so they can also breathe through their skin their skin has a lot of blood vessels 
and so their skin also does not have a very thick layer so that the gases can dissolve okay through the skin be picked up by the blood in the blood vessels near the skin and also be distributed to the body okay so that is what happens all right now to illustrate okay so maybe it's a bit confusing it is best to have an example okay first is the arterial system okay so that means when you think arteries okay a for artery a for a way it means that the blood is taken away from the heart okay there yeah. so what happens is this is your ventricle okay now your ventricle will pump the blood away from the heart so it will pass through the arteries and so your main blood vessels first you have your bulbous cordis this area is the bulbous cordis also known as the um, conus arteriosus okay and then it will reach this part the aortic uh, aortic trunk also known as the truncus arteriosus and your truncus arteriosus will branch into three okay so the first one would be up here okay and then next is the one here and then the third one down here so the first one is the carotid all right this is the carotid artery and then the next would be your systemic artery and then the third one would be the pulmocutaneous artery so the pulmocutaneous will divide into two it will be it will branch out into the pulmonary artery and the cutaneous artery so that means that of course the blood will be taken to the skin okay and also to the lungs so this blood okay or there all right so now this blood so I will explain later which blood is oxygenated which is deoxygenated so let's just go with the circuit first so this is essentially your highway now to the rest of the organs essentially um, what happens is most of the organs are found down below so they will go through the systemic arch okay here systemic arch and then this will fuse to become your dorsal aorta okay now your dorsal aorta it's almost very abrupt will branch out and this will be the celiacomesenteric artery okay the celiacomesenteric artery mainly provides to your digestive system it will branch into the celiac artery and the mesenteric artery so the celiac artery for the stomach and all the other parts there so that is um, they are stated in your manual so you will study so basically I'm um, just to, to keep it simple for example if it's the artery to the stomach then it is the gastric artery if it's the artery to the pancreas it's the pancreatic artery okay so they're pretty much named straightforwardly all right so the celiacomesenteric artery so that will branch off you know a lot of other blood vessels there that have names okay according to the organs to which they are attached and then this one further down here is the dorsal aorta okay and then the dorsal aorta once it reaches the kidneys it will branch out here so you have your genital arteries okay and then finally after the kidneys it will branch into two so this is the common iliac artery all right and it will lead and it will branch further into three hypogastric to provide a bit to your bladder and also to your large intestine femoral and sciatic down to the thighs and legs okay so essentially that's it so here that means from the ventricle okay so from the lungs it has picked up oxygen okay and then it is now the job of the heart to distribute the oxygen to the rest of the body okay so that is why you have the arteries okay arteries the systemic arch okay the systemic circuit of the arteries contains oxygenated blood the one that goes to the other organs okay now the pulmonary circuit okay so remember arteries pulmonary artery remember you have the pulmocutaneous artery okay 
Now for the polynocutaneous arch, okay, of course, remember that uh, there is also the mixing of deoxygenated blood. So when this goes to the polynocutaneous arch, it goes to the lungs, of, um, carbon dioxide is expelled and oxygen is brought back in. Okay, so partly the blood that goes to the polynocutaneous arch is mostly deoxygenated, ideally. Okay. At least for mammals, that is what happens. But for toads, it's a bit of a mix. Okay? Yeah. Now let us go to the venous system. Now for the venous system, V for veins, so you can think that it goes back to the heart. Okay? So, that is why, so the reason why it's colored blue is because usually blood vessels, veins that do not have oxygen, they usually are colored blue, okay? There, because of the color of the uh, blood cells and the pigments, okay? They change, okay? So that is why we can tell that for the venous system, okay, here, that means the organs have used up the oxygen, and so they are returning the blood that has the carbon dioxide and all the other waste, okay? So the gaseous waste, they are returning it to the heart, okay? so that the heart can pump it to the lungs and the lungs can expel the carbon dioxide okay there so from your heart so now let's go for example let's take an organ okay here down below now for the organs down below their main highway is the posterior vena cava this big vein here is a big fat vein right here is the posterior vena cava okay most of the blood from the lower part of the body, from the thorax, okay, downward, passes through the posterior vena cava, okay? Now, from the post cava, it will now enter the sinus venosus, which is part of the heart already, okay? Now, from the sinus venosus, it goes to, sorry, it goes to the, uh, the right atrium, okay, there. So, it goes to the right atrium, and then from the right atrium, it goes to the ventricle, okay? All right. So, so, for example, um, you have uh, veins here. Um, when you skin your toad, you will notice that when you cut away the abdominal, the rectus abdominis, you will see this uh, blood vessel. This is one right here. That is called the ventral abdominal vein. So, from the, the lower extremities, okay, they can pass through the ventral abdominal vein or they can pass through this part, this important one. This one is the renal portal vein, okay, it goes to the kidneys, and from the kidneys it's filtered, it's cleaned, and then it goes to the posterior vena cava, and then back to the heart, okay. And then, now for the pulmonary circuit, the lungs have picked up oxygen, okay, the lungs, they have picked up oxygen, and so what they will do is they will send this back to the heart. It will enter the heart via the left atrium. Okay, and then from the left atrium it goes to the ventricle, the ventricle will pump it, and then some of it goes to the systemic circuit, and so the oxygen is distributed to the rest of the body. Okay, there. So that's basically um, how it works. Okay, so let's just give an example. Okay, how do you trace the blood from the thigh, from the thigh all the way to your stomach? Okay, so from the thigh it will go to the stomach. But remember, you have to pass through all the circuits. So from your thigh, it will pass through the femoral vein. From the femoral vein, it will enter. Uh, first, it will go to the iliac vein, because the iliac vein will branch. Okay. From the iliac, it will now go into the renal portal vein. Okay. And then to the kidneys. And then it will go through the renal veins here. And then it will go to the posterior vena cava, and then the sinus venosus, and then the right atrium and then the ventricle okay and then from the ventricle let's go to the previous slide now from the ventricle it will now pass through the conus arteriosus okay remember you have to pass through the pulmonary circuit because you have to get oxygen again right so you will go through the pulmocutaneous vein uh, artery sorry and then you will go through either the pulmonary or the cutaneous artery depending on where you want to get oxygen all right and then 
you go to the lungs and then you get the oxygen okay now from the lungs it goes back to the heart and so you will go so from the lungs so you have the pulmonary veins which will lead to your left atrium this time it is the left atrium in the left atrium and then the ventricle sorry okay and then from the ventricle now let's go to the stomach so from the ventricle now you go to the conus arteriosus truncus arteriosus now you go to the systemic circuit and then you go to the dorsal aorta the celiacomesenteric the celiac artery and the gastric artery there that's pretty much it that's how you trace the flow of blood so remember that when you trace blood you should also consider the um, pulmonary circuit okay you don't just go um, from femoral to iliac posterior vena cava sinus venosus then uh, I mean yeah right atrium ventricle and then systemic arch right away you don't do that you know of course you have to pass through the lungs because you have to get the oxygen and you have to get rid of the carbon dioxide so always remember the pulmonary circuit okay so that's what a lot of students kind of forget so there that's pretty much how we deal with circulation now as for the blood vessels so it is up to you to study them we're not really going to discuss them in detail here but what I've taught you is the skill of tracing the flow of blood okay so I'm very sorry this was fast paced but I hope that you got to learn a little bit of something so this is the main reference for the image. So thank you very much for watching.